It's not every day you hear about a country deliberately flooding its own valley. This will be the largest U.S. project in 40 years since such works were banned. They're not just pouring water into a valley, they're drilling straight through a mountain. Backed by a $690 million investment, it's considered urgent for America, yet it's also creating a disaster. All right, let's dive in and find out what this project really is and why the United States needs it so desperately. For the past 40 years, the United States has built almost no new major dams. After constructing more than 90,000 dams throughout the 20th century, a powerful movement called No More Dams erupted in the 1980s. Back then, Americans believed that building dams meant destroying nature, but climate change has forced the country to return to the very thing it once rejected. In just the past two decades, the American West has suffered the worst drought in fate 200 years. Yes, you heard that right, 1,200 years? According to NASA and NOAA. The Colorado River, the lifeline for more than 40 million people across five states, Colorado, Utah, Arizona, Nevada, and California, is drying up day by day. Even the nation's two largest reservoirs, Lake Mead and Lake Powell, have dropped to alarmingly low levels. If your home water tank had only 10% left, what would you do? Of course, you'd start saving every drop. That's exactly what's happening in Nevada and Arizona, where residents face rotating water cuts, farms are being abandoned, and entire towns are considering buying water from other states. Meanwhile, cities along Colorado's Front Range are experiencing explosive population growth, expected to double by 2050, sending water demand through the roof. Here, water has become the most urgent issue in people's daily lives. But here's something most people don't realize. 80% of America's population lives in the East, while most of the nation's water is in the West. Every spring, as snow melts from the Rocky Mountains, billions of cubic meters of water rush down into valleys and flow west toward the Pacific Ocean, leaving the dry eastern plains behind, the very region expected to double in population by 2050. So how do you move water across such a massive mountain range? The answer lies in Chimney Hollow Reservoir, near the city of Loveland, Colorado. Back in 2004, the Northern Water Organization and Larimer County quietly purchased 3,500 acres of land from Hewlett Packard, land once meant for a luxury resort. That marked the beginning of a plan that's been in the making for nearly 20 years, surviving countless environmental lawsuits and public controversies. Now the government has promised to replant twice the number of trees removed, create wildlife sanctuaries, and fund conservation through the Great Outdoors Colorado Lottery. Construction officially began in 2021, and by July 18, 2025, the dam was completed, becoming the largest water infrastructure project in the U.S. in two decades, securing water for over 500,000 residents across 12 communities along the Front Range. But to fill this massive giant water tank, it will take at least three consecutive years of rain and melting snow. To turn an entire valley into a reservoir, the United States had to build one of the largest engineering projects of the 21st century. The Chimney Hollow Project carries a total investment of $690 million, with $570 million dedicated to the main dam itself and another $150 million for the Western Water Delivery Infrastructure. Imagine this. Deep within the mountains, engineers are constructing a massive wall, 107 meters, 351 feet tall, and 1.13 kilometers, 0.7 miles long, roughly the length of 11 football fields laid end to end. Once filled, it will hold 1.22 billion cubic meters of water about the same amount the entire city of Denver consumes in over five years. What makes Chimney Hollow unique is that it's not a traditional concrete dam like the legendary Hoover Dam. Instead, it's an embankment dam, a structure built from layers of rock and soil, with a special watertight clay core at its center. Around this core lies the dam's body, made of six. 18 million cubic meters of rock 
carefully compacted layer by layer. To the south, a 12-meter high auxiliary dam acts as a safety barrier, preventing water from rising beyond the secure limit. Engineers describe Chimney Hollow as a living giant that breathes. Its design blends rigid and flexible materials working in harmony. The inner core blocks water seepage, while the outer rock layers absorb pressure and movement. If the Hoover Dam was the symbol of 20th century power, solid, heavy, and monumental, then Chimney Hollow represents the 21st century, adaptive, intelligent, and engineered to coexist with climate change. After completing the massive frame of the dam, the next big question arose. How do you make sure it doesn't leak? Normally, American engineers would use clay as the core seal material. But at Chimney Hollow, when excavators reached the valley floor, they made a shocking discovery. The entire area was made of rock and crushed sand. There wasn't a single usable grain of clay to patch the heart of the dam. The solution came from Norway and Sweden, where engineers have perfected a technology known as the hydraulic asphalt core. This material is both flexible like asphalt and completely watertight, capable of expanding and contracting with temperature changes without cracking. Across the world, more than 200 dams have used this technology. But in North America, Chimney Hollow is one of only two projects ever to test it. The entire core is cooked and mixed on site, with about 100,000 cubic yards of asphalt blend heated to 150 degrees less, 302 degrees S, combined with fine aggregates and poured between layers of gravel and rock. Engineers describe it vividly. It's like a stone heart wrapped in a giant layer of rubber, soft in the middle, solid on the outside. Before installing the core, crews had to build a temporary coffer dam to keep the valley dry, excavate over 2 million cubic yards of soil and half a million cubic yards of rock, then pour a concrete plinth at the base. They also drilled deep into the bedrock to inject a cement grout curtain, sealing every natural crack to ensure the dam's foundation would be absolutely watertight. As we mentioned earlier, the water for this project comes from melting snow on the Rocky Mountains. But here's the question, how can those streams possibly cross the mountains to reach a reservoir on the other side? The answer lies in a complex underground network of tunnels and massive pipelines. What engineers call the Artificial Circulatory System of Colorado. The journey begins at Windy Gap Reservoir, where water is pumped through a 10-kilometer, 6-mile pipeline to Lake Granby, then continues flowing through Shadow Mountain Lake and Grand Lake before entering the Adams Tunnel, a 21-kilometer, 13-mile passage, drilled straight through the mighty Rockies. Just imagine, it's an underground artery twice as long as the height of Mount Everest, carrying water against its natural direction of flow, a feat that few nations would ever dare to attempt. On the other side of the Adams Tunnel, the water moves through a 600-meter, 2,000-foot tunnel, a cluster of pressure control valves, pumping chambers, and a 3.2-meter-wide, 10-foot steel pipeline that delivers it directly to Chimney Hollow Reservoir. These pipes are so large that a small truck could easily drive through them. The entire system is concrete lined, monitored by AI-powered pressure sensors in real time, ensuring not a single drop is lost on its journey across the mountains. The filling process will begin in mid-2000 air, mid 2025 and take about three years, depending on snowmelt rates and seasonal weather. Picture this, 1,000 tuity, 1 tuus, 22 billion cubic meters of water won't pour in all at once. It will be poured slowly, drop by drop, like pumping new blood into the heart of Colorado. And if you think this is just a reservoir, think again. It's a colossal living machine powered by mountains, snow, and technology, where every drop of water must cross the Rockies to reach the people who need it most. A dam standing over 100 meters tall and holding more than 1.2 billion cubic meters of water. What would happen if something went wrong? The engineers behind Chimney Hollow know exactly what's at stake. 
That's why, alongside the dam's massive body, they've built a digital brain, the first large-scale artificial intelligence system ever used to monitor a dam of this size in the United States in the 21st century. Embedded throughout the structure are over 500 sensors measuring seismic activity and water pressure, buried deep inside the asphalt concrete core. They record every tiny vibration, from the pulses of the wind, the hum of pumps, even the faint tremors of distant earthquakes dozens of kilometers away. All of this data is sent to Northern Waters Control Center, where AI algorithms constantly learn and compare vibration models, capable of detecting the smallest leak or crack, accurate down to the millimeter. Every day, autonomous drones fly along the dam's surface, scanning it in 3D at centimeter-level precision to detect even the slightest deformation. This technology is similar to the systems used at the Hoover and Oroville dams, but at Chimney Hollow, it's fully automated. No human operators required. The entire structure is built to withstand a magnitude 7 earthquake, powerful enough to tilt a 30-story building. In other words, this isn't just a dam. It's a self-watching, self-listening machine, a structure that can guard itself and respond to the world around it. As of now, the Chimney Hollow project has been completed and entered the trial operation phase. With nearly all major components finished, from the dam body, the water tunnel, to the AI sensor system, the project is managed by Northern Water under the Windy Gap Firming Project with an extremely sophisticated operating cycle. Each year, the reservoir will store water in winter and early spring, when snow and ice melt from the Rocky Mountains, and then release it in summer and autumn, the time when agriculture and domestic demand reach their peak. It can be said that Chimney Hollow functions as the water memory of Colorado, storing when there is plenty and supplying when there is shortage. However, operation is not simple. Each year, the lake can lose up to one meter of water just from evaporation, equal to millions of cubic meters rising into the air, enough to supply water for a small city. In addition, mud and solid deposits over time are also a major challenge, requiring regular maintenance and, to, and frequent sediment filtration. To cope with this, the government has implemented a series of measures, planting biological buffer zones around the lake to reduce wind and evaporation, installing IoT sensors to monitor the water level every hour, and using satellites combined with drones to observe the shore area. Every small change in depth, water color, or humidity is sent back to the control center. Although it is praised as a rescue solution for the future, the Chimney Hollow Reservoir also carries scars that are hard to hide. Although the Colorado state government insists that this project was designed to avoid areas with endangered species, the truth is that the entire Chimney Hollow Valley, once covered with young pine forests, small streams, and summer campsites, is now buried under tens of meters of water. If you had come here 20 years ago, you probably wouldn't recognize the place anymore. The songs of forest birds, the early deer herds, the streams flowing over granite, all now exist only in the memories of Loveland's residents. The government has promised to create an alternative ecological area twice the original size, with a 2-1 reforestation program planting two new trees for every tree lost, and to build biological corridors so wildlife can move freely around the lake. Part of the funding comes from the Great Outdoors Colorado Lottery Fund, used to protect waterfowl and native rodent species. A deeper concern lies in the natural flow of the Big Thompson River. When the water is diverted into the reservoir, the downstream flow may drop by 15 to 20 percent during the dry season, threatening wetlands and downstream farmlands that sustain more than 60,000 people. Some hydrologists warn that this change could disrupt the biological balance of the entire Platte River Basin, similar to what happened at Lake Powell after the 1970s. Even so, compared to most hydraulic projects around the world, the Chimney Hollow Reservoir is not enormous in size, but its influence extends far beyond the borders of the United States. It is the largest hydraulic asphalt core dam in North America 
and is considered a precedent for the first generation of smart dams in the world. Countries suffering from severe droughts such as Australia, South Africa, and Chile are closely following every step of this project. With dry climates similar to Colorado and increasingly unpredictable rainfall, they view Chimney Hollow as a global test model. A new approach that achieves waterproofing, not only through materials, but also through data and sensors. If the project succeeds, the United States could become an exporter of next-generation dam technology, replacing traditional earthen dams that are prone to leakage, subsidence, and instability under extreme weather conditions. Compared with the world's mega-projects, the scale of Chimney Hollow is like a grain of sand. China's Three Gorges Dam submerged 13 cities and displaced 1.3 million people. Canada's Site C took 15 years of environmental debates before construction began. And Africa's Kariba Dam created the largest reservoir on Earth, with a capacity of more than 180 billion cubic meters. Yet it is precisely this modesty and scale that makes Chimney Hollow truly remarkable. It does not seek to conquer nature with mechanical force, but to live in harmony with it through technology and intelligence. And so, after nearly two decades of debate and construction, the United States is now ready to flood an entire valley to create the first smart water machine of the 21st century. But the question remains, Will America's future truly be saved by technology? Or is this just a temporary patch for an endless thirst? What do you think? Is it worth it? To make a valley disappear in exchange for clean water for half a million people? Share your thoughts below in the comments. And if you enjoy stories about mega projects shaping our planet, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you won't miss our next episode.